Right. Hammer down. I will call this workshop uh, special workshop meeting with Jacksonville City Council to order. Uh, council, uh, we have a uh, copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting. It's containing uh, a consent item, one consent item, and uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt. Move for adoption of the agenda. Second. Second. Okay. And the consent item, Mr. Bitter. Including that. Motion and second are on for any discussion. With no discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Now we're missing a couple people. Mr. Willingham and Okay. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the first item on tonight's agenda uh, will continue with the uh, fiscal year eight, 2018 budget review. Uh, and we're going to we'll turn this over to Dr. Woodruff if you have uh, a few items on here left for discussion. Evening, Mayor, members of Council. Before we begin the session this evening, I'd like to take a moment to commend Susan Baptist, the Police Department, all of the park staff for an outstanding job on the Jacksonville Jamboree this past Saturday. Uh, very, very well done. To show you the level of team support that we now have among your staff, on Friday afternoon, you will recall, we had some pretty heavy rains, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. The large lot in front of the facility is the area where we were going to stage the food court. So Pete Deaver, being a man who loves water, decided that he would come over with his two vacol trucks. <laughs> And literally, in a period of two hours, they dried out that entire field by using the vacol trucks to go into the um, low depression areas and simply suck up the water. If they had not done that, Saturday would have been a disaster relative to the food trucks. But because of Pete's being part of the team and his folks jumping right in, uh, it was a success. Anthony Prins provided the transit service from remote lots, and we literally ferried people morning, noon, and night. The police department, fire department were all there to provide that service. We had excellent participation by the citizens. I believe, Susan, you said that you estimated the crowd was 200,000. <laughs> okay, that's her story, and she's sticking to it. But I, I think a, a realistic estimate you said was somewhere around 4,500 people. That's good. And as you'll recall, part of the Jamboree included uh, 16 softball teams in a tournament and 80 basketball teams in a tournament. We had people literally in every gymnasium uh, that is available in the urban area of, of Jacksonville playing basketball. But again, your staff are to be commended for an outstanding effort. And I'd like to remind the public that the mayor and council make the funds available so that these activities are free. Whether it's the climbing wall, where I saw uh, several young people uh, get to the top and decide that they really would like to jump off, and they did, <laughs> to uh, riding the ponies that were there or riding the merry-go-round and so forth. But it was just a great effort by the staff and a great uh, accomplishment for the community. So thank you all for supporting that. Good job. At the end of each workshop, we take the notes from the previous or from that workshop and then provide you with updates. There were several that you asked for. One uh, from last week's workshop had to do with the health plan. You asked the question, how many people in the different plans actually meet their deductibles? And it was a little bit of a surprise to me that uh, in the 1250 plan, we had 25 people who met the deductible. In the 1750 plan, we had 28 people. And in the 2750 plan, we had 44. Now, it didn't surprise me in the lower deductibles. But as you get to the higher deductibles, that was quite surprising that we had 44, uh, you know, employees who met the full deductible. Late this afternoon, we received the information on uh, the question that you asked regarding if we increase the copay for the emergency from 300 to 400 and to 500. Uh, I did not actually have that information in, but I did get a note from uh, Mary Don and Kimberly saying that it was in, so I'll be providing that to you tonight. Kimberly, out of curiosity, did you bring that with you? I do. So okay, would you step up and join the mayor there? And now, for the record, this is not the new appearance of the mayor pro tem. This is the 
it's HR director. Thank you for the promotion. I appreciate Step it. Step up. Cut and, cut and pay, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better title, but a cut and pay. <laughs> I think I'll decline the promotion. Thank you. Um, so we talked about going to 300, and the question was, if we took it to 400 or to 500, what would that be? If we went to 400, that that estimated savings would be, or savings of, or I guess, expense would be 46,300. 500, moving the ER deductible to 500 dollars, would be 68,600. 68,600. Okay. And at 300 dollars, the savings was about. Thirty-five or thirty-six thousand was my I think so. I don't have that in front of me, but Sounds I believe so. Right. So we decided to go to three hundred, which just twenty-three thousand. That's what. What was that? For the three hundred. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a two fifty. That's a two fifty. What was that number? Well, if that's for, if it went to two fifty, it'd be twenty-three thousand five hundred and three. I think so, I think somewhere <coughs> three hundred is somewhere about thirty two thousand dollars. So okay, I yes, thirty five two fifty five. Okay. Thirty five. Okay, so three hundred is thirty five two fifty five. Mm -hmm. To go to four hundred is forty six thousand three hundred, and to go to five hundred would be sixty eight thousand six hundred. The reason that I think the recommendation was three hundred from the committee is because that really is an industry standard. It, most people don't go below that or above that right now. Last year it was recommended that we look at something a little higher. We went to 150, I think, last year, and this year um, I thought that was a pretty significant bump to go to 300. But I know you wanted to look at some of the savings associated with increasing that. So that's an item that you can decide now or, or before you adopt the budget is to uh, the recommendation that you approved last week was $300 minimum and that you would look at four and 500 depending on the savings. And this is just strictly using static numbers that say theoretically if last year we had the same, you use the same numbers of visits. Correct. Yeah. So you're not taking any potential savings of the yeah, do a, incentive do to keep people out of the yeah. emergency room. You're just saying if everything stayed the chain, same except for the deductible, which you would think that would modify behavior some. Well, we hope that the number one thing that would modify the behavior is the teledoc, phone -a doc program that we've set up. But right. these estimates do not, uh, my understanding, I may be wrong, but my understanding is these estimates assume that Visit state Industry same. trends, if you raised it to these levels, this is what you can anticipate savings. It's Obviously, no guarantee. I think so, it's based on Blue Cross Blue Shield's experience. Correct. You know, they plug that into the model they have. That just like all those other changes that we propose, they plug them into the model and they come up with an estimated savings. And they also look at their entire book of business for the state of North Carolina and say, based on our book of business, what seems to be a reasonable deductible for emergency room visits. You also ask, uh, relative to finance, uh, community development uh, had a $917 uh, line item and, and finance has provided you with the explanation. Stormwater, you asked for information regarding the uh, level of revenues that come in and the one thing that we would point out and, and we did in the note There will come a point. I'm not sure that, that any of us will live long enough to see it But the DOT will do the project for the drainage improvements at Western and 24 and We know that when that project is accomplished that it will require some type of ancillary work by the city so while the fund, the unrestricted fund in that account is over $2 million, uh, we are encouraging council to let that build up some so that when we do see that project accomplished by the DOT, we will have money there should we need to do some ancillary work. And of course, uh, if you approve the $582,000 that's in the budget from the Center Street uh, for the Center Street project, that will reduce the unrestricted amount. Public services, you ask about the ONWASA interlocal agreement. Uh, it is a 20-year, at the end of that, that uh, bond does, that payment does sunset. 
sanitation. Carrie did an outstanding job giving you an overview of the Sunoco contract. Uh, as you know, it is um, currently in the uh, the original terms of the contract were for five was for a five year period ending October of 16. So the original contract's over. The contract contained an option to extend the agreement at the sole discretion of the city for one year periods up to a maximum of five. So we're currently in those extension periods. Our discussions with Sunoco, they have been very clear that unless the industry turns around, that when these extensions are over, and they would actually like for us to end them now, that we're going to see a substantial change in what they're charging and that they will start charging us for that. What I recommend on that is that we analyze this further as we get into the early part of the next fiscal year and that we bring back to you a workshop that says, okay, here's what we're currently thinking Sunoco is going to go to. Here are some uh, options. One option may be simply to ride as long as you can under the current contract and then just face the uh, new contract when it comes up. Another may be to begin to negotiate a new five-year contract that tries to anticipate an increase but lowers that increase by having it start earlier than the extensions that are in it. But those are things that we'll be discussing with you. But I thought Kerry did a good job of uh, providing an overview of that contract. Also, uh, in the previous notes, uh, note number two from the original meeting had to do with a comparison of each department showing the authorized positions in FY 15, 16, I'm sorry, 16, 17, and 18. That was provided to you, and later in this evening's discussion, we'll be going through some of that material. Mm -hmm. Any of the, the follow-up items you'd like to have further discussion on? Any thought at this point regarding the deductible for the ER? I, I would like to, to see it raised. I, I know, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in positive reinforcement, but I also believe that if sometimes a, a stick will sometimes do too, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but, but unless we get a handle on our health insurance, it's not it's going to be a problem again next year and the year after. And as much as I'd like to put all my faith into the positive side, I'm not sure it's going to do it all by itself. So I would be I would be open to to do you know maybe four hundred dollars. I'm willing to you know, not to not to try to kill anybody on the thing, but but it certainly needs to be addressed. That's that's, that's my, a policy my, my decision opinion, for you all to make. My opinion. We already went up. With the proposal for 300, 100 percent, right? We went from 200 to 300. Yes, sir. Okay. In Clemson math, that's 100 percent, but you have to refer to the <laughs> NC State folks to get the actual. Uh, I call it 50 percent markup. I'd continue with that. I think that's an incentive. Maybe it's not sufficient. Maybe it is. But time will tell to uh, thwart some of the ER business. We, our uh, our health insurance has taken a hit the last probably the last three years in a row. And, I understand. And you know we've eaten up the reserve. We'd hoped uh, when we did this change a few years ago, we'd hope we'd have uh, some money sitting in the reserve to to uh, to help. It, and it did help. No question that it did help. But uh, our current current trends is is we're going to continue to have to put another price increase next year unless we've changed some behavior. So. I was just trying to head off a potential increase next year. I mean, we've got to discourage the use of the ER. I mean, I, we, we've done it verbally. I mean, we've sent the message out there. And like you said before, it, unfortunately, it's still viewed as the economical alternative because there's no immediate out-of-pocket. I mean, so... I, again, I, I, I think differently than most or a lot of people. I mean, I look at the total, you know, today's dollar versus, you know, a dollar today is cheaper than two dollars tomorrow to me. Um, so, I mean, I'd be willing to, to push it a little further to see if we can't 
you know, if somebody needs to go, then you got to go. But like we're finding, it's not always a need. It's a convenience. I think, yeah, I think something that would be real important is to make sure that we educate our employees on this whole idea, you know, of that not being the first choice. We've been meeting with, uh, at this point, other than police and fire, we have now met with all city employees in, in individual small group meetings to discuss the teledoc, the benefits of that, how it works. Had a meeting early this mor morning with the, pardon me, had a meeting early this morning with Fleet to discuss with Ed and his folks that, uh, you know, we are going to have to be the promoters of whatever we do. You can't send out emails. You can't send out uh, others. You have to go eyeball to eyeball with your employees and talk to them about the benefits and the issues that we're facing. Are we locked into a year? No, sir. So but <clears throat> if we stayed at 300 and mid-year performance didn't show positive results, we could make a change then in midstream, too. My, my understanding, where is uh, Kimberly? Uh, the... My understanding is that you can modify your health plan any time during the year because we are the ones, it's our plan. Um, yes, I believe so. So I think communicating a change in year would be, would be complicated, but I think, yes, we can do that. What we will do, though, is we will verify that as a budget follow-up. Can we change the plan during the year? I'm, I'm, I've never intended, don't intend for the increase to be a punishment. It's hopefully a deterrent to try to help them in the long run. So I'm, I'm willing to, to sit, try to three, 300 and, uh, and, and look and see mid-year what it, what the trends look like. You know, you know, if we look like we're going to be in trouble again. I think we'll need to make, take action. Then I think I'd find every reason to support your rec recommendation. Then. Sir, what did you just say? <laughs> <laughs> if the trend, mid year trend shows a less than desired result, I would support Bob's recommendation to go to 400. And, and I'm saying I'm willing to support his, his, uh, his uh, postponement to look at a, at a trend, see what, see what, see if the teledoc has made an, an, an impression on the employees and, and trying to save them from the. Well, we get quarterly updates, so we will provide you with those quarterly updates. Bob, uh, do you need an action on that? No, sir. Okay, just... Uh, Not unless you all want to establish a rate other than... I do, I, that, that's fine. I'm just going to point out that if mid-year, six months, you want to change it, you just can't change it overnight. It's going to take 30, 60 days, even if Blue Cross allows you. got to issue new cards to everyone. Anyway, there's some procedural things you'd have to go through with a change. And you typically yeah. pay in advance, so I guess you, you know, you may factor that in, however you do that. You have to look at it. So you may end up grinning and bearing it for a whole year cycle, right? That, uh, that's possible, depending on how quickly they can turn it around, even if it's permitted under the plan as Kimberly's checking on for you. So well, I'll, once check, I'll check on that. Get that information tomorrow. Okay, once again, since you're not adopting anything this evening, uh, we'll take the uh, positions you've stated. We'll try to verify some uh, information on, on modifying it during the year and also what the time lag is relative to the reporting. Okay. Other issues in the follow-up? You've been through a series of workshops as shown on the board. Uh, May the 16th is a potential adoption date, but again, you have until June the 30th. So the staff is certainly not pressing you for a decision, but at the point when you are ready, we are ready. On May the 16th, you could have a workshop. If you need the workshop on the 16th, then your options for adoption would be to have a meeting on uh, May the 23rd or to adopt at the first meeting or second meeting in June. The reason why you, if you need the workshop on the 16th, uh, any decisions you make there would need to be put into the budget final numbers, so you could not have a workshop on the 16th and actually adopt it on the 16th. Tonight what we'd like to do is also uh, look at departmental issues, which is page 185. 
Look at the fee schedule, which is page 187. Look at authorized positions. And if we have time, give you an overview again of the things that or the projects that are proposed in the 18 CIP. Now, we're not looking at the full five years because, remember, only the first year of the CIP is what you're authorizing to build. Also, we want to give you an update on the water and sewer rate study and also potentially give you information on wage adjustments. If you look at page 185, you will find their department issues, but you actually don't find all 37. When the budget is turned in, based upon the budget guidelines, the anything that is a real change in a function, a policy, a way you're doing business has to come in as a decision departmental issue. So there were 37 turned in, 26 I approved and put in the budget. Ten I did not recommend. They're not in the budget. There's one for council decision. Of course, all of these are council decisions. Let me give you an idea of the things that I approved, the 26 that went in the budget. We talked before about the HR technician, and you know there is a cost there. We've mentioned that that's offset one third by HR cutting their own budget, one third by temp. So you're going to have to add one third, you know, roughly 46, 47. I'm sorry, 16 or 17 thousand dollars out of the general fund. Another is the city clerk. Last year, you approved $10,000 for a temporary employee. All we're doing in this line item is saying we're not going to hire that person through the temporary employee. We're going to hire them through ourselves. So it's a numbers authorization, but it has no cost. The crisis counselor, that was a one-year grant. It has been renewed for one year. Since there's no financial, been renewed for two years. Thank you, Chief. Um, the, the crisis counselor, it has no financial impact on the city. That was not a match. It did not require, unlike the COPS, where we have to, the COPS grants, where if you accept the grant, you have to eventually put the person on the payroll. This is simply a grant, so since it had no financial impact on us, but it did have a positive service, we put that in the budget. Child forensic exams, based upon some decisions made by other governmental agencies, the funding for the child forensic exams are no longer available through other sources. These exams are essential due to child abuse. So we, we put that $15,000 in the budget. Uh, street excavator, uh, five years, it's, a, it's a, something the streets needs in order to do the drainage. It's funded over five years, $8,000 cost. Recreation specialist going from a part-time benefited, that's what PTB, you know, to a, let's do that again. It's currently a part-time benefited for certain hours and then a temporary employee for other hours. We're recommending that becomes a full-time position. And the actual cost is right at $3,000 a year for that because you're already spending the rest of the money through the part-time benefited and through the temp. Question. Yes, sir. The excavator. Didn't we, uh, didn't on also give us an excavator? Uh, well, not exactly gave us well, we an excavator, purchase. but we did purchase their excavator four years ago, five years ago. About four years ago. Is that that long? And it's, it's worked very well. This is a much smaller excavator. Johnny? Yes, sir. You're on. Mm -hmm. Come on up here, please. Don't dig yourself a hole now. <laughs> I won't even try that one. We have three small excavators, two in stormwater and one in the general fund. The small one is similar to one that the land treatment site has, but uh, it's not big enough. We've got those small ones to do certain emissions in the backyards and all the places we go. Works perfectly, but we found out that Pete's excavator, we use it almost as much as he does that he got from Amwasa. That one has been a lifesaver and we've done many, many tasks with it. So if we get this one, it is an upgrade on what we have. We are turning one in. It's a replacement, but there's about a $20,000 overall budget difference. 
So that would enhance our mission much, much more. I'm satisfied. So he did not dig a hole for himself? <laughs> Now, the six rec aides, uh, currently they're part-time, non-benefited. We've talked about, uh, you know, changing them over and becoming uh, where they, where instead of being temp agency employees, they'll become part-time, non-benefited. Transit equipment, FTA funded, had no impact on us. Uh, construction inspector, we mentioned this as we went through. This $40,000 would be to hire an on-site person. The projects themselves will pay for it. That's a contract employee, so it won't be someone who has benefits. It won't be someone who has long-term longevity. When that person's hired, he understands that when the, uh, when the Sturgeon City building is finished, when the Welcome Center is finished, his job is finished. With, uh, with, with reduced demand for our inspectors, would would it be possible to, to to move somebody over in there to, you know, instead of hiring hiring a separate one, just to, to utilize some of our current inspectors? Uh, the answer there is yes, and we're looking at that. But again, this is uh, this money would then be charged to the accounts of the projects, not to the general fund. So there will be there are possibilities okay. there we're okay. studying. Okay. I think thought, that's a great idea. I'd ask. Very good idea. Uh, stormwater street equipment. Uh, Johnny, you can come over and see if you can tread water on this one. <laughs> Mr. Bittner was going to say that, so I jumped in front of him. Yeah. Do you have any names with you, sir? Because <laughs> I've got several in there. Um, we'll come back to that one while we're fine. I may have answer. to because the, the main one was the excavator. The... Um, We'll come back to that one. Uh, on the fleet, that's the summer position, part-time, non-benefited. And then there were miscellaneous 15. Let me give you an example of what those are. If a person is turning in a used truck and it has just one bench and they want to go to a crew cab, that's the department issue. So I look at those and I approve them. And that's primarily what the small miscellaneous things were there. While we're looking up the other, let's look at the 10 that were not recommended. As you know, we contribute $50,000 a year for public-private partnership contributions. The request came to increase that by $15,000 up to $65,000. CD supplies $30,000 a year also for public-private partnerships. There may be a point in time if CD ceases to receive HUD funding that you may decide that you want to increase this. I feel like this year is not the time to do that because all indications are that you will have HUD funding for one more year, but only one more year. Now certainly if you feel that we should go ahead and be proactive and increase that now, you can certainly add that. Uh, three police officers in the police department. Uh, I do not support that. I understand the workload that Mike has, but I'd also remind you that through transfers from vacant positions to police and also the grant which he has received for a telecommunicator, we are adding two telecommunicators. They're not sworn officers, but there are two telecommunicators that we're adding to the police department. But again, uh, if you... Uh, if you would like to add those positions, I'm not opposed to it. I just do not feel like that, uh, that the money is there. Uh, another was a truck being transferred or changed out for $40,000 for a, another squad truck. We're buying several pieces of equipment in the normal rotation. I did not feel that this was something that uh, was a high priority for this year. Uh, life, fire life packs. Now, that's not misspelled. It's the factory name, PKS. Uh, those we do not currently have personnel trained to use. These are not the normal breathing apparatus. They are a special uh, life pack. And since we did not have personnel trained, I did not see that it was a, a good investment, even though it wasn't uh, an overly expensive investment. Uh, recreation athletic assistant. 
Uh, I believe that there are going to be some vacancies that we can transfer a position there internally rather than adding a position. So we did not recommend that. Also, uh, in recreation, there was a request to move uh, four center supervisors from temp to full-time and 16 aides or assistants from temp to full-times. Uh, we're making one step this year of transferring uh, six people, and we simply don't have the funds for another you know, $240,000 or whatever that totals. Water and sewer line, uh, until we see the bond, until we see the rate study come in, we cannot be adding any additional expenses of magnitude to the operating budget. Now you'll hear in a few minutes where we are on the rate study. So while I, I clearly understand that Pete can use these additional people, there has to be a balance between your debt ratios, your operating expenses, and your debt. So since we don't have the rate study in, uh, I simply cannot recommend that at this time. But I will say this. I am acknowledging that Pete is doing an outstanding job, that his employees are really uh, doing a good job, and that they could use several additional employees. It's just the data isn't there yet for us to make that final decision. Uh, the same thing with sewer. Uh, you know, so altogether, uh, you know, there were those requests, and of course Johnny had a request for a, a full-time person, and uh, we could not support that at this time. The one item that uh, that I did not make a ruling on one way or the other is the neighborhood matching grant. As you will recall, the uh, we established the Office of Livable Neighborhoods. It has done a very good job with the Bayshore community and with Belfork. And there is a concept that what you would do is establish a matching grant so that if those neighborhoods wanted to do something internal, and I'm not talking about having a party, but if there's something physical that they thought that they needed that could help, if they would raise the money, you would raise the money. Now, at this point, we have not put together any guidelines as to how the match would be. Would it be 70-25? I'm sorry, that wouldn't work, would it? 75-25? Would it be 50-50? Would it be available only to the two neighborhoods that you've started in, or would it be citywide? I think the real question is, uh, from a matching grant standpoint, uh, do you want to put some money in? Here's what I'd recommend to you. You do have a $200,000 contingency. Let us put together some guidelines for you over the next several months, and if you like those guidelines, then you could certainly reduce your contingency fund by $10,000. Otherwise, you could put it in the budget, and if you don't spend it, it simply goes back into the fund balance next year. But that was one that I felt that I should not, uh, I should not judge one way or the other. This is about you and your citizens, whereas the others are about the service level that I'm responsible for. We had a request for the Don Tons facade program. Was that, is that in the budget? or? Actually, it, we have found a way to put that in the budget in that um, uh, from time to time we put in $30,000 for public-private partnerships. And so we have uh, money in the existing budget for matching grants in the downtown area if council wants to establish that. What I would suggest is that you leave the $30,000 in that line item and that you allow us to bring back over the next month or two the guidelines of how that could be used in the downtown. Do you think that's acceptable? Fine. Fine with me. Yes. Okay. I'd like to do the same one. I'd like to, I'm, I'm in favor of, of trying to uh, help the uh, neighborhoods, and I think 10000 would be a good start. And I think it would go a long way in helping Lily establish some credibility with those pe folks, too. To, so I think it's, I, I'm in favor of coming back with some guidelines. Okay. Ditto. Any answers yet, man? <laughs> We're working on it. Okay, they're working on it. All right. While they're working on that, remember, if you don't find the answer, you don't get the money, so you better work hard. Okay. Uh, let's look at the, at the full-time authorized position. This year, you have uh, 557 
and we're talking about going to 560. And in, let me find my notes on that. Give me one second. No, I'm looking for a uh, special cheat sheet that I've prepared. I can't find it. Okay. Here's what the here's what the three person increase is. Yeah. The one additional telecommunicator from the grant. The one rec person that we're moving from the part-time and temp up to full-time, and then the one HR position. So those are your three full-time positions. The part-time benefited drops from six to five because one of the part-time benefits is benefited is one of the people added in full-time. Now, the part-time non-benefited goes up by 15. First of all, uh, let me talk to you about the part-time non-benefited. Uh, Susan Baptist has many of those people, but interestingly enough, uh, 14 of those people are instructors who teach less than 30 days a year. So when you look at 48, you may get the feeling that Boy, that's a whole lot of folks who are on the payroll practically the whole year. That's not the case. When we have, uh, you know, for example, a tennis instructor, we don't hire them through the temp agency. And because of certain regulations, because we establish their fee and we establish their hours, we can't actually just go out and contract. If you're hiring a mowing contractor to go out and mow six sites, what you're saying to the contractors, we'll pay you x you mow them whenever you want to mow them on sunday if you want to mow them at night if you want to but well okay not at night okay <laughs> but when we when we are giving tennis classes we will say there's six classes it meets at six o'clock and here's the location and because of the fact that we set those parameters we actually have to hire those people as city employees and Another reason is most of these people, they simply don't have the liability insurance because they're just instructors. You know, they like yoga, they like tennis, they like pickleball. You notice I put a plug in for your pickleball. Okay. And that's why 14 of these people are simply instructors who work less than 30 days a year. So, you know, they're not, uh, it's, the number gives you one impression. Six of those are the rec aides that we talked to you about going from the temp agency over to the city. Three of those are in streets where we are currently doing it from temp. We're bringing those in-house, so that's nine. One is the new fleet person, so that's ten. Three are your water quality people that Pat hires during the summer. Those are currently temp. They're going to become city. So that takes you up to 13. And then in the police department, you have two additional ones, and that's because of the way Mike handles crossing guards and temporary people he needs to fill in in telecommunications. So, you know, it gives the impression that we're really increasing the number of employees. Uh, the vast majority of those are simply transferring from the temps. So you've got six transferring from temps, Nine, 12 of these are coming in from the temp agency. A little, a little confusing. I apologize for that. And of course, here's the breakdown of positions, you know, by fund. And then uh, in authorized positions, to show you again, HR, you see the one position we talked about there. Sworn officers, no change. Sworn part-time benefited, zero. We're actually reducing from one to zero. 
And that is because one of the uh, most wonderful people I've ever met uh, who has been with the police department forever has moved from being a sworn officer to a civilian. And I think we all know who that person is. So, uh, and, and that's one of the positions, uh, that's the reason why that sworn is down to zero, but one of the uh, civilian positions is up. Again, in police department, there were 30 positions in 16. In 17, uh, Mike received the crisis counselor from the grant, and I transferred a vacant position into telecommunicator. The 33rd position is the telecommunicator he's picking up from the grant. So that's, uh, that's an overview relative to the personnel positions. On the capital improvements, uh, without getting into every project, I wanted to give you a very quick overview. Uh, Western Boulevard landscaping, New Bridge Street improvements, you've already seen we've started the work there. And many of these projects span several years. So it's hard to say, you know, for example, like New Bridge Street, uh, we're going to spend about $100,000 in the 17 budget, another 100000 in the 18 budget, probably another 100000 in the 19 budget. Richard Ray Park, the amphitheater, that work is continuing, and you know that's being funded by the money from the sale of the property. Northeast Creek Park Playground is completely new, as is the bulkhead at Northeast Creek. That's phase two of the boat ramp. Riverwalk Marina, you've seen the pictures which uh, have come out based upon the work that Pete's crews, Alan Baker's crews, Johnny's crews, and a lot of other folks have done to clean up the marina. And I sent you a sunset picture this past weekend. It's pretty amazing to see your waterfront. Tennis court resurfacing. Now, Susan, I don't think I put that in there, but I believe Mr. Thomas asked you a question regarding Kerr Street. Yes, it Can was you refresh our memory? 2009. 2009. Okay. And then, of course, the majority of this is going to be over at the Commons, those tennis courts over there. Uh, rails to Trails, that project is just finishing up. It has about $20,000 left. And then fiber connectivity, you will see that in each year's budget as we are trying to make sure we're connecting and expanding. Just a quick question. Is the uh, tennis court resurfacing over at Commons, is that because of all the pickleball activity over there? <laughs> it appears to be because, you know, those pickleball people, they pickle an awful lot of them. Right but uh, I think I've told you once before that that was a... Uh, <laughs> I believe I made the mistake of telling you that those were concrete courts. They're actually not. They're asphalt courts. And that's one of the reasons why they need to be resurfaced is the asphalt has been picked away. So Has there been any look at maybe something that would be better for that purpose that would be cheaper in the long run. Susan, you want to uh, join us? Well, please. I, I, I typically, uh, the, the as surface that we have on there is, is pretty standard for tennis courts. It's just a matter of how it's laid out and the quality of it. Um, so we're hoping to improve the quality and just keep on an ongoing maintenance. Filling in the cracks and filling in the holes is imperative. So we hope to really just get it, um, get the holes repaired, get the cracks uh, filled in, resurface it, and then really stay on top of it. Uh, asphalt is pretty standard. In transit, we have the park and ride lot. Uh, we're very pleased to tell you that that at the Commons uh, should be under construction by late summer, early fall at the latest, and should be operational by the time we have the next Jacksonville Jamboree. And of course, that one is being funded uh, by a combination of city funds and FTA funds. Now, the city funds are not actual dollars. That's where you're matching the value of the land, and that covers your match. The multimodal center, the same thing. Uh, we're waiting for FTA funding for that. Uh, should we get to, to start uh, at least some design work? And again, your, your match is the value of the land. Powell Bill street paving and sidewalks. And the TDA, the Beirut Memorial Grove signs, and the Commons digital sign. Now, we'll say to you, uh, at the Commons, we've run into some problems, as you'll recall. Uh, we may be able to find a way to do that. Stormwater, the only real other than maintenance, will be the Center Street project, which is $582,000 project. 
Um, when it comes to water and sewer, instead of uh, listing all 18 projects that total $30 million, I simply picked those that were roughly half a million and above. And you can see the Parkwood project estimated at $34 million overall, $23 million in the first year. And then you can see the other projects as we go down the list. Okay, just one, one slide for uh, water and sewer. Now, there are other capital projects that we're working on that won't necessarily be funded out of the CIP, at least not the 18 CIP. Had a meeting today with uh, Deanna uh, and with the designer uh, uh, for the Welcome Center. We're very pleased to tell you that we think that by July we'll have the Welcome Center out on the street for construction bids. I think you're going to be pleased with that building. Uh, on Sturgeon City, we're right on schedule with the architect. We uh, will currently, we are scheduled to be on your agenda for next week to talk about changes to the lease and anticipate having uh, final uh, documents prepared and out by early June to mid-June for contractors to be looking at bidding the project. Award of the bid probably August, September. City Cemetery, uh, Carmen and John have led that effort. Uh, Deanna has certainly helped. Uh, we've gotten a lot of assistance from Parks and others, but you see that that is moving on. Uh, right now we're waiting for the final piece of marble to come in that will have uh, the Jacksonville City Cemetery engraved in it, and then the corner will be uh, finished with uh, the brick, and then you'll finish up with the rest of the uh, fencing. But that's the overview of your capital uh, projects for this coming year. Any questions on any of those? Let's talk about the water and sewer rate study. The city hired Stantec to create the model. Stantec is not creating the fees, they're creating the model. Now, why is that important? There's no need for us to hire a consultant every two or three years to tell us what the new rate should be. What we should be doing is hiring someone to create a model so that we simply plug in the information and that information tells us what the rates will be. So when Gail and, and Wally and others came up with the idea of not hiring someone to tell us what our rate should be, but to create a model, I thought that was a great idea. So currently, Stantec is creating the model. Once it is finished, they will train the finance department and engineering and public works on how to use the model. We will give you demonstrations on how to use the model. Once that is finished, though, we will be able to have periodic updates. So literally every year, the staff will be able to give you a new rate model and tell you based upon your capital projects and where you're going, here's what your rate should be for the coming year. That doesn't mean they'll go up every year. It means that we now have a tool that literally every year you're able to look at the rates. Currently, the status is this. The model is being finalized. We had a conference with Stantec two weeks ago, Ron, two weeks ago, and we asked them to do some additional tweaking that would make it easier for us to use. Once that is done, we will then, to, then we will begin to load in various scenarios, and that will occur in May and June. We should be ready by August or September to bring back to Council and to the sewer, Water Sewer Advisory Committee what we think the rates should be. Now, remember, it is information in, information out. So if you put in scenario one and it results in a rate that you don't like, you can go back in the model and say, okay, what if we took that project that was a $3 million project and we moved it out two years or three years? So that's the value is instead of being given a report that says, here's what you should do, you're being given a tool that allows you to see the results of your decisions and from those those decisions decide do you like those do you like the outcome because if the model comes in the first year and says you should have a 10 percent rate increase i think all of y'all are going to say yeah that's a great idea but before we vote on that how about if we look at changing some of the parameters in the model so again the nice thing about water and sewer rates is they do not have to be adopted at a specific time of the year 
My best guess at this point is you won't be looking at a rate increase or information regarding a rate increase until September, October. And at that point, we'll have enough information in. Now, what does that do to some of the projects? Well, the projects that are in your capital, whoops, wrong way. The projects that are here, some of them will move forward because we're basically funding them out of our own cash flow. Other projects, they may slow down. But uh, that's where we are on the, on the rate model at the present time. So all this bond issuance and stuff is coming after all this rate modeling comes it has in? To. Yes. yes, because remember, the rate right. model creates the feasibility to prove that you can pay for the bonds. Now, be okay with us if you want to vote to approve the bonds and then figure out later the rates, but I don't think that's what you're, no, what you're going to do. How old is the old model? Well, actually, Didn't I don't we have know. That, like, 2009. Like that? Yeah, 2000. we're already in 2009 when we were doing the Raftalis. <laughs> Raftalis, right, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was also associated with a bond issue and a feasibility study. And when we went out for um, proposals this time, Stantec, gave us what we think is a better model, more dynamic, easier to use. It's got some uh, dashboards that'll be easier for us to show you what the effect of a change of the rate, 2% or 3% will be. The other model was a little cumbersome, so we're looking forward to that. But you're exactly right, uh, Mr. Thomas. You're not gonna move forward with the uh, bond issue until you have the rate model not just the rate model, but until y'all make the decisions regarding the outcome of what you want in the rate model, because that's going to term, determine the feasibility. <clears throat> if you're talking about financing in-house, then how are you going to start something and then... Well, we'd be looking the, at, the, at the lower projects, the okay. things that we would normally... We're not talking about big projects at all. But, you know, I mean, projects like 500000 or a million-dollar project, that's one thing. But any of those larger projects, the, the schedule is simply going to have to slide on those until we know what your rates are going to be. And we do think it would be worthwhile to have a joint session of the Council and the Water and Sewer Advisory Board as we show the rate models. And we do it separately because I know that the Water and Sewer Advisory, uh, they really get into a lot of detail as they should, but we can make that decision. Okay. Let's see what's next. Um, on wage adjustments, just for your information, I did send out an email over the weekend to you. Uh, Onwasa and the county have not adopted their budgets. The school board had neither. So we don't know exactly what they're going to do. What we can tell you is that the uh, county manager has told me that he is going to be recommending a uh, consumer price index adjusted rate on Wassa, uh, their executive director has said he'll be recommending the same. That doesn't mean that the county commission or the on Wassa board will approve that. Uh, generally, that's a rate, depending on which you look at, of somewhere between 2 and 2.9 percent. Every, you know, there's not just one consumer price index. There are the adjusted, there are the regional, uh, and then the school board, I was not able to get any information from them. What I would like to also show you is what you have done in the past. Uh, it has not been a specific pattern, but what you can see is that last year you did $1,000 across the board. You can see what the consumer price index was at that time. You can see in 16 and so forth down the way. Uh, so that's just information for you. I would also like to show you this chart that when you gave a $1,000 increase last year because not all city employees are paid the same. It had a varying impact on the, uh, you know, on what percent you actually got. It's interesting that $1,000 across the board resulted in 80.9%, that's like 446 of your employees getting a 2% raise or higher. And you see that some got, you know, higher and some got higher and some got higher. And everybody has an opinion as to wage increases and how they should be applied. 
this chart shows you that if you do a thousand dollars per employee here is the impact on the funds or if you do a percent there is the impact on each fund for each one percent my position has always been and i'm going to state it again publicly i have never been in favor of the city manager recommending in the budget a pay increase while i understand that i'm responsible for the hiring and performance of the employees if i put in the budget a rate increase a wage increase and you support it guess what i'm the hero if i put in the budget a rating uh, a wage increase and you don't support it i'm the hero you're the heel and that's not fair these are your employees so my position has always been that i do not put in the budget any information other than data i do not give a recommendation to you as to what you should or should not do with your employees and that's the reason why i don't do it is because i believe that that puts you in a, in a no-win position and i don't think that that's what i should do uh, you, the chart says that one thousand per employee but i thought we had 560 employees but you haven't spread over funds but i'm just saying i added those numbers up and they're about 600 and some well, all I can say to you is I got that information from finance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, well, like I said, there's... That, that includes the regular part-time employees, I think. I'd have to go back and verify that. Well, they, it, it does include those that are part-time benefited, but not necessarily at $1,000. So, for example, if you are working 30 hours as part-time benefited, then you would have gotten not what a 40-hour employee would have okay. gotten. So last year, our 1,000 was not 550,000, right? I do not remember. I can't tell you that. We will, we will verify <laughs> the numbers for you. Oh, you know what? That includes the benefit. That's why it's high. Okay, so what so you're saying... The and the retirement... Oh, this is cost. Yes. I see. That's what's oh, going to okay. change your budget. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Well, that's the reason why I called on finance, because they do the thinking and the operation. So, so that the additional re retirement, additional FICA. Uh, um, Social Security, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. the matching parts. I mean, uh, A little bit of workers' comp. Workers' comp, comp unemployment uh, insurance, is, we pay that. Uh, right? we'll, that's not in. Yeah, uh, that, we pay that a little bit differently than the retail establishment. Uh, but again... Uh, that's a decision for for you let me see if I have any other oh here are just some uh, considerations uh, health plan increases local competition certainly impact on the fund balance because that's where the money's going to come from employee morale relative to the rate increase and premiums I believe Ms. Washington asked uh, the question at the last meeting to actually show us to, to show you what is the cost increase? If you'll notice, uh, you have employee <coughs> only, employee and child, employee children, employee spouse, employee family. Assuming that the 1250 plan, which we're eliminating, that all of those people move to the 1750 plan, what you'll have is 152 employees that are just employee covered. Or you'll have 20 that are employee and child, or 8 employee and children, or 15 employee and spouse, or 14 employee and family. And you can see the same numbers for the 2750 plan. The 10% increase actually results, remember we have 26 paychecks, so when you multiply it out, for an employee only who's on the 1750 plan, that 10% increase in premiums will cost him $78 a year, not a pay period. The highest impact is the 14 people who are employee and family on the 1750 plan. That cost them $598. On the next column over, you see the 2750 plan, and you see that it ranges from the employee only, $52, 
or all the way down to the family, employee and family, 70 of them at $416. So again, you know, this is, this just simply shows you information that when you pass along any increase to an employee, it has a very different impact depending on whether it's a percent increase or depending on how they choose to invest their money with the health plan. So it's not one impact. I mean, obviously you can see that uh, a 10% rate increase on 84 people uh, is significant. But I would also say to you, they have chosen to provide that benefit. And personally, I'm glad that they do. But that's just additional information for you to think about as you decide uh, at tonight or whenever you want to decide on what you want to do with the premiums. I, I'm sorry, with what, the uh, what rate did you, increase. What was it that you said the adjusted CPI was? Roughly 2% right now, up to 29 It depends on which CPI you're looking at, whether it's the national CPI, the regional CPI, you know, different ones, some of them include buying cars, some of them include gasoline, some of them include a lot of one-time purchases. Uh, we usually go with the regional adjusted CPI, which Gail was right at 2. two I think it was 2.0 yeah. at December. That's the one we usually use. It would compare to those other numbers on the previous slide. Okay. What you may want to do is, uh, you know, take a break for a few minutes and come back and decide, uh, is there any more information you need to provide, like for us to provide on the budget? What do you want to do on some of the decisions? I know you do not have a full council tonight, but that's up to you all as to whether you want to uh, wait for a full council. It just at this point, unless you have other questions of the management, we're ready to turn the budget over to you for you all to decide what you want to do. Let's take a break. Take a, take a recess. <clears throat>
Okay, we're going to go back in session now. Uh, I think, Dr. Woodruff, if you want to talk a little bit about the fee schedule. Yes, at the very back of your budget, you will find a uh, proposed fee schedule. It starts with its own numbering system, pages 1 through 46 or 48. What we've done in the fee schedule is to try to clean up several issues. I will simply point those out if you would like to follow along. On page 4, under fiber optic cable, uh, what we are doing is, is instituting where we work with other governments. Now, we're not talking about providing this to any citizens or businesses, but we are setting up something so that when we work with a companion government, school board, the ONWASA, uh, or with uh, Onslow County, there is a fee per foot, and that's shown on page four of your fee schedule. When it comes to, on page five, fire department fee schedule, uh, just a minor change of $30 per hour when it comes to special event billing instead of $22.75. You'll notice on page 6, we are striking the ETJ because those uh, inspections, reinspections, and so forth, uh, you can see the changes that we're doing there, and the majority of that is because of changes we're making in the ETJ. On page 7, uh, you can again see fire prevention code requirements. We've stricken some language there to try to clarify how we do our work. On page 9, when it comes to fire inspections relative to automatic fire extinguisher systems, what we found is that instead of having one fee, the larger the building, the more time it takes us to inspect. So we're setting it up as many other fire departments have so that the larger the building, the larger the inspection time needed, the larger the fee. Same thing on page 10 relative to fire alarms. The larger the building, the larger the fee. The next change is on page 22. Uh, record fees, uh, Mike and the record committee have recommended some changes, as you'll see, so that the record fee for vehicles under 10,000 pounds, and then you can see that the outdoor daily storage is going from $25 to $30, the indoor from $30 to $35, the after-hour fee is also changing. And you can see the note says, Vehicles placed in the storage lot after 9 p.m. shall pay one-half the daily rate for the day placed in the lot. All additional time will be counted as a full day. Now, that came up because of a complaint where a person had had a vehicle towed at 7 o'clock in the evening, and the uh, person was charged a full rate. Another person was towed at 11.30 at night, and was charged the full rate. So we're trying to uh, put some fairness there that uh, you know, if it is after a certain hour, you get a half rate otherwise. But those come from your record committee. Parks and recreation fees, you'll see an awful lot of red on page 23, 24, 25. The main thing here is we're, and even 26 and 27, we're trying to make it easier to calculate uh, the use. So, for example, you'll notice on page 23 at Jack M. Yet, we had a two-hour minimum and so forth. It just, it's just easier to set these things up where instead of having $50 for the gym for two hours and so forth, this is just an easier way to implement the schedule. Susan can address some of these things if you'd like to have more details. That's a big raise, right? Well, in a way, it, it appears to be, but in reality, it, it's not that big of a raise in that the way that it was previously calculated, uh, we're just trying to make it clear. If you want it for two hours, it's $50. You want it for four hours, you know. Susan, you want to come up and help explain this? Them. So that it was easier for the user to take a look. So I believe we um, gave them a clear away. So right now, previously, 
um, what, what, what we're saying is, is you're going to get it for two, four, or eight hours. What's your example? Uh, I'm saying like the room for two hours is now right, $60. So let me look. At, are you looking at Jack Emmy yet? It's a two-hour. It's a two-hour minimum. So it's the way we had it, an hour, right? Right. Well, it was twenty-five an hour. It was. 20. It was twenty. <clears throat> was it forty? I mean, I, I guess it is. Confusing. The markouts are kind of confusing. Yeah. Let me look at. Okay, I apologize. So if you look at maybe another easier example would be, we use a lot of the. Um, what we're saying is, is that there's a two-hour minimum to everything. We're breaking it so that it's two hours and that rather than charging per hour where it was like if you look at the commons gym which is a common one we charged a hundred dollars now we're saying it's we just we charged a 50 and i want to say we just are breaking it into easier two four eight hour blocks so let's see um two so you're raising it i mean that's eight hours was 350 now it's 400. we are raising the rates you are also raising changing the, the way we're calculating the rates and the reason why is because we're also trying to cover all of our costs so that when a person uses that facility, we're not subsidizing that by the normal budget. Is it full? Are you using it all the time? I mean, you're... No. No, so because remember, right. these, are, these are activities that, uh, that occur after normal hours, the vast majority of them. Now, for example, if the Chamber of Commerce has something like the, uh, the business expo, or the Bridal Expo. Uh, depending on whether the city is a co-sponsor of that, they may not pay anything. For example, the Minority Business Person of the Year, that enterprise. We co-sponsor that, so we don't charge them anything because it's during normal hours. But like, back to the Jack Amy Is the room, the room now gonna be $60 for two hours? Yes, but it was 40. 30. 50. 50. The room? Okay, the room. The room. Not the gymnasium, 40, the room. Yeah. Let's do this. It's obvious <laughs> that, that we're confused and you're confused. We'll make we this do. one of the items for, uh, for further discussion before you adopt the budget, because we need to clarify exactly uh, what we're proposing to you. And I'm not so sure that after looking at it again, when it comes to the rec fees, four hours would go from 80 to 120. Again, I, I think it's a little confusing looking at it, but um, I believe that what we tried to do was just calculate and add those hours all together so that it was what we were charging was on an hourly basis. Let's work on this. I think the I chart apologize. is a little, we need to, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Sorry about that. You go from 80 to 120, forget about it. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we will clarify that. Now let's go through any other changes, though, other than recreation changes. Let's see if there. Uh, all the recreation changes we'll bring back to you. On page 33, mm -hmm. solid waste fees, we're simply uh, putting in a clarification that on the small business rate, it's not per account, it's per container. For example, uh, if you have one container, it's $6.10. But if you want three containers, instead of having a dumpster, you're going to pay three times $6.10, not, not per account. And then the next stormwater fees, we don't have any change there. Water and sewer fees, we don't have any change there at this time other than on the page 42 we have a hydrant meter deposit uh, we are raising those uh, one of the reasons why is we have found that uh, some people have um, enjoyed our meters so much that they've taken them with them and you can't replace one for five hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars so the deposit on the hydrant meter uh, deposit is going up now that's not the meter that a single family home uses. We're talking about construction meters. And then no other changes. So the uh, apologize for the confusion on the recreation rates. We will clarify that and 
and have that in one of the follow-up notes. Richard, I think while he's ready to answer his questions, he hates to get cut out the budget. Okay, <laughs> on the question regarding the equipment, uh, the answer to that will be now be supplied by Wally Hansen. We apologize for the confusion. Um, the other piece of stormwater equipment that was uh, shown in the budget at $8,700 is the transfer of the sewer camera truck to stormwater. We are purchasing, uh, we are life cycling out the sewer camera truck. We're purchasing a new camera system and truck in uh, water and sewer, and we will transfer the existing truck to stormwater. Um, and the reason for that is Johnny currently borrows that truck to camera our storm drain system, um, our stormwater pipes, and he has to wait um, until it's available and um, work very closely with Pete. And uh, so this will make it more efficient for us um, deal dealing with stormwater pipes. So that's the piece of equipment that is shown at $8,700. And it cannot be transferred without a fee because you're going from a water and sewer fund to another enterprise fund. We felt it appropriate that that other enterprise fund should purchase it from water and sewer. Now, we have a designated operator for that camera truck, right? We do. It's like that's his job. We Maybe. do. But we will also have Johnny. Johnny's people are also trained, right. so it won't be water and sewer people who will be that's using... Correct. They will stay strictly with Pete. So we have a few loose ends that we will follow up on. Uh, again, on health insurance, we will proceed to implement the changes at $300, but we'll provide you with quarterly updates. We will also get you a better breakdown that will show on wages uh, the the additional cost to explain the difference between $1,000 plus $1,000 plus benefits, and then we will get you better clarification on the recreation fees. Were there any other follow-up items that I failed to record? Okay. I have a question, Doctor. Yes, ma'am. It's not a follow-up. Um, <clears throat> in regards to our, our pay raises that we give the city employees, Last year we gave across the board 100 percent. Um, um, we gave across the board one percent, correct? No, you gave one thousand dollars. We gave a thousand dollars. Okay. During that time last year, do department heads um, have um, the discretionary that if they want to give additional raises to their employees, can they do so? Uh, the answer there is no. What they can do is a Performance Plus award for outstanding work, and I'll give you some examples. In sanitation, because they're on the task method, when they stay for, example, Jacksonville Jamboree or for the Winterfest or for National Night Out, we bring sanitation crews in. Well, we can't pay them overtime because they're on the task method. So what we do is we write a Performance Plus award to pay, if I may use that term, let's, let's don't use that term, uh, let's use the word reward or thank those employees. Another example, uh, Susan has a number of employees who've put out an, a great effort this past year, this past week, on, winter, on uh, Jacksonville Jamboree. She will most likely forward to me a recommendation for certain Performance Plus awards. A recent example in parks, You've seen the pictures where they have built the levels, the stone front of the levels. Well, they got paid for doing that, but Michael processed five Performance Plus awards because he felt that was above and beyond their normal work. So an employee, a department head, a division head, no one at that level can change a person's pay simply because they think somebody's doing a great job. Where we do change pay is where someone actually changes jobs. Their job changes. The job audit says this person is no longer doing, for example, a building inspector two. They've gotten additional certifications. They've become a three. The pay plan allows me to look at that and on the pay scale move that person up 
whatever that number is. Let's say it's $1,000 a year. I don't actually know what it is. Or, for example, if a person is uh, reclassified where their job audit, because they've taken on additional responsibilities, their job is analyzed during the year, then that person can move to a new job title, a new job grade, and with that, I can approve up to a 10% increase in pay. But no department head can just simply say, these three employees, I'm giving them a $4,000 increase in pay, or even a $1 increase in pay. The pay plan, which you all have adopted, covers that. Now, all of that has to be done through HR. No, not me, not a department head, no one person adjusts anybody's salary. When salaries are to be adjusted, they go through HR, through a, requ a written request asking for a reclassification study, a job audit. From there, the, the information is collected from the employee and from the employee supervisor. HR does the Springstead analysis. From there, the recommendation comes to me. If I approve it, that person can get a pay increase. There are also situations where, in the course of time, if a person is being recruited away from the city, you have given me discretion to increase that person's salary up to 10% if I believe, and the department head recommends, that that person is vital to the employment of the city. And I will not mention a name, but I'll give you a recent example. We had a person who works in a very uh, uh, almost unique position with the city. He's done outstanding work. That person was being recruited away to become a technician with another community over in the eastern part of the state. That department head came to me and said, this person has done an outstanding job. I cannot really afford to lose them. We're lucky to have them. These people are going to pay him, in this case, $7,000 more. So I said, fine, we'll match that salary. Those things don't come back to you. So I want you to understand there are pay changes during the year that I'm authorized to make under the guidelines that y'all have adopted. At this point, we're finished with our presentation. Y'all can deliberate uh, this evening or at a future date. The only loose end that uh, we have so far is the fee schedule and what you want to do relative to employee wages. Can we look at that wage chart again where you had the breakdown of how it affects different employees, groups yes, sir. of employees, classes of employees? Let's go back. Uh, was this the chart you were talking about, or are you? That's it. That's it. This one here? Yeah. Okay. And what you can see, obviously, is the lower the pay scale. Mm -hmm. So if you are, you know, a, a $45,000 employee, which is the bulk of our employees or less, you can see that $1,000 gives them anywhere from a two and a half or above. I mean, some of our lowest employees, uh, sanitation workers, some of our street workers, some of our parks workers, they, they make up some of those lower numbers in the uh, 88, 34, 28, and 3 Well, categories. roughly 350 some employees got 2.5% or better. Mm, well, I'd like to see the bottom number come up. Am I looking at that right? Well, let's say 200, 300, 400, about 430. Yeah, from the from the 2.5 and above, you know, you're basically 200, 300 employees. I was comfortable with that scenario. It uh, it does what we talk about rewards the lower paid employee and. Uh, looks like about the average increase is what we're talking about in terms of the CPI. Hmm. In fact, I feel so strong about it. I'll make a motion that we do the same thing we did this year for employee raises. Provide $1,000 across the board as an increment increase to their salary.
have a motion. Sound like we're going to have a second on that one. No. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, discuss this again later on. Uh, it's not it's not an issue that's dead, but we'll. I would forward. I would I would feel more comfortable with with the full council okay. being here to, just to hear their input. I've always valued other opinions, um, but on the other hand, I you know, uh, Mr. Pittner wanted to to do it tonight. I don't mind doing it. I like the idea of a flat. I do like the, the concept of a flat amount to the employees because I do think it tends to, to be more fair, I think, in, in my mind. Um, I, I, would, I, could, I could recommend a $500 uh, a year increase, which I think would, would be more in line with, with the overall CPI, I think, for the, the bulk of the employees. So that would be my recommendation. I'll make a motion. See if see if mine gets one. Uh, Five hundred dollars across the board for all employees. Motion. I'll make a second. But I'd like to go back to that next slide. Uh, this one. Right. This one here. Yes. So you're talking about taking the first column by half. Yeah. And basically, it it gives it gives it's close to a. 50. A little over one percent for employee, at least in that scenario for the general fund. So here you're talking five fifty six twenty five. Say six plus forty. It's about six seventy. Six hundred seventy thousand. Total impact. Total impact with what we did last week by contributing three hundred thousand to insurance. You're still talking about nearly a million dollars additional mm -hmm. cost. Um, <laughs> I would like to have the full entire council to spend more time in talking about this. And also, Dr. Woodrow, I would like to request to find out um, for last year, for those employees that received um, additional pay for performance, how much did that total come to? The Just, max, yeah, I can get that. Yeah. Uh, the maximum you can get under a performance plus award is five hundred dollars. No, I'm just saying what was the total what dollar the total? amount? Yes, if you want to do a disbursement in terms of between you know fifty dollars and a hundred dollars, this is how many employees seventy five. You know. We can do that. I have a motion and a second on the floor. If you want to withdraw that motion until the rest of the council is here. No, I, no, I, I would have been content earlier, but I'm, I, I made a motion. I mean, if you, I mean, you, you prefaced your motion with that. Well, I didn't. I was just making a general comment. That was not prefacing. Okay. <laughs> then we're going to put it to a vote, yep. correct? Yep. Is that what you want to do tonight? All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Aye. We'll discuss it later then. Any other follow-up you'd like for us to do? Uh, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Over here? Okay. That will change the schedule. You want to talk about that, Richard, a little bit? Right. It's going to have to push it off a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like I say, you have some wiggle room there. So. That's fine. We're going to have a workshop on the next meeting then? Too? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You just have to push the adoption items. date off till when? The po uh, next possible adoption date would be in June, correct? Uh, you could have a, a, a scheduled meeting, a special meeting on the 23rd of May. You could do it the first meeting in June. But y'all can decide that at your next meeting. Thank you all for your courtesy. Appreciate it. Motion, Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs>